And with us today, we have our very own Lisa Casciola, who we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, today, we have a very interesting topic to talk about. Uh, the Tenny Vlog is something that we're putting together to try to discuss topics that educators and parents would find helpful in the, getting their children and students to achieve academic success. Mm -hmm. And today, we are talking about whether it is good to rank or not to rank your students. So before we get into that, Lisa, why don't you just give us a, a rundown of, of your background and experience so people know a little bit about you. Okie dokie. Well, I've been teaching for nearly 36 years, and I started out teaching um, science, biology, and chemistry, and um, currently I'm the science department chair at the Tenney School and also am the college advisor here. Okay, great. So Lisa's kind of going to carry the, the water for us here today on this topic. And then I'll have a couple things that I'll add in. We've both been researching this mm -hmm. and digging into it. It's a really, really interesting topic. It is. Um, so why don't we just start out, tell us why, when did this phenomenon start? Okay, so um, as far back as 2001, um, several high schools began questioning the validity of reporting uh, rank according to GPA to college admissions. Um, in 2006, it was over 40% of U.S. high schools um, that did not report rank to college admissions. Um, an interesting development in the state of Texas, in 2008, Highland Park ISD in Dallas, after um, a, a very extensive study, decided not to rank their students or not to report rank to the college admissions. Um, currently, over 50% of high schools in the U.S. do not rank. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, and I think for a lot of parents, it's kind of confusing because the well, world yeah. that we came from, of course, you got a, a high school rank and you knew what it was. It was reported to colleges. Mm -hmm. And then to enter a world where all of a sudden your children are not getting a class rank, it's very confusing for some it parents. Um, so, uh, as early as 2000, it started to happen, um, and I think uh, before we started, we talked about in the state of Texas, mm -hmm. this is really accelerated because of? The top 10% rule, top 10 absolutely. Rule. So there's some reasons why, well, the, the, the state of Texas came and said that schools, their public schools had to admit students that were in the top 10% mm -hmm. of their class, and that rule has changed the landscape of uh, how schools want to position themselves to help their kids get into colleges. So let's kind of get into now mm -hmm. why, what are the pros? Why would schools choose not to rank their students? There are a lot of reasons for this increasing trend in not ranking. Um, for instance, if you have a very small school like our school where we may have a graduating class that's less than 10, um, to rank and look at ranking statistics is pretty insignificant. Um, even in larger schools where you might have a really large number of very high achieving students, the differences in their GPAs might be down to the 10,000th of a grade point. Mm -hmm. um, some of those schools are seeing some really outstanding students be squashed out of the top 10, again, just by a thousandth or 10,000th of a GPA point. Um, yeah, there was something that I read that said, going back to that top 10% rule, and in those really competitive mm -hmm. schools, the year after cho schools chose not to rank, um, I think there was a school district in Austin right. that said they actually got 40% more students into the University of Texas. Yeah, into the University of Texas at Austin, absolutely. Af after they chose not to rank their students. Um, so any other pros you can think of? Yeah, um, several. So if a school does not, a high school does not rank when grades or, or transcripts are sent to the college ad admissions folks, um, schools will include a very, very informative and extensive school profile. That school profile will include um, oftentimes a grade distribution for that senior class, which would include a range and a median. Mm -hmm. It would also include a very um, you know, detailed description of the grading policy at that school. So you know, I see it as a plus that college admissions folks could glean a lot more information mm -hmm. 
about a student from a school profile than just a single number of, you know, of rank. Okay. Um, I think, too, when kids learn that, oh, my school is not going to rank anymore, I think it opens them up to um, a wider course selection. Right. Maybe instead of saying, oh, I'm going to take that AP chemistry course, although I love chemistry, but even instead of taking an, a particular AP course to boost the GPA, they might decide to explore another interest. They might de decide to explore an art history course or, sure. or a debate course or what have you. And I think that actually results in more well-rounded more educated sure. kids. Yeah, I think uh, the big picture as a school, we're mm -hmm. we want our students to be lifelong learners. Absolutely. And so part of that is an enriching environment academically, letting kids study things that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And with so much emphasis on class rank, a lot of times you're forcing kids to take classes that maybe they not might not be interested in taking, and it, it might have detrimental effects to their, uh, you know, the way they perceive academics. Absolutely, and another that leads to yet another big positive is stress reduction. Um, in schools that don't rank, um, it is just kind of such a burden that's lifted from the kids. I think not ranking encourages a much healthier camaraderie mm -hmm. and you know spirit of cooperation among the kids when they are not pitted against each other sure. in such a fierce competition. Mm -hmm. And that in itself lowers the stress. And yeah. you know the kids these days are under a lot of stress that sure. we did not um, experience. Sure. Yeah, I read one article that talked, I think it was in California maybe, but they mm -hmm. talked about uh, when they announced that they weren't going to rank the next class, they had a bunch of kids that came in and they were all happy that they were saying, hey, drop me out of this class, I really wanted to take that class, yeah. let, me, let me take this elective instead. So um, just, to, it was a, a burden release from the students. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. any other pros? Um, you yeah, you know, because if rank is not reported to college admissions committees, um, you know, the college admissions are going to start looking at our kids a lot more holistically. Okay. Um, rather than just looking at that one number for rank, um, I do believe they're going to be much more interested in, you know, what the kids are doing outside of school. What kind of mm -hmm. ext extracurriculars are they involved in? Um, how are they serving the community? Um, you know, what kind of jobs have they had? What kind of part-time jobs have they had? And, you know, really sure. look at what interests them. I think it will put more importance on teacher recommendations okay. and also essays. I, I feel like both teacher recommendations and essays really bring a kid to life in, mm -hmm. you know, looking at an admissions file. Sure. Okay, so um, we spent a lot of time talking about the pros mm -hmm. of class ranking. And um, now let's spend a little bit of time ta sure. talking about the cons. So s some schools have chosen not t or to continue class mm -hmm. ranking, and there's reasons for that. Um, so what are some of the reasons, the cons, of why you should continue ranking your students? Okie dokie. Um, two of the big reasons um, schools and colleges would like to see ranking remain um, is, is really beneficial for the administrators in, in both settings. Okay. Um, for college admissions officers, um, it is, you know, if an if a application comes in that is not ranked, it takes a lot more time wow. to review that application sure. and make a sound decision on sure. that kid. Um, similarly, for high schools and high school administrators, there's a little bit more work involved in not ranking, actually, um, where ranking would give us, oh, you know, cut and dry, who's a valedictorian or salutatorian? Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's a little bit more it's hazy. Yeah, uh -huh. it's muddled uh -huh. without, uh, without ranking. And also, for some administrators, there's the additional um, task of preparing the school profile that needs sure. to go out. Okay. That's interesting. I, you know, I, as you were saying that, uh, my mind, to my mind comes the admissions office at those colleges. Uh, and, you know, I've read that 
uh, colleges have seen a tremendous rise in the number of applicants they get mm -hmm. because of the internet, because of the common Absolutely. application, apply Texas, those those things that it used to take a lot of times to write out an application. Now you just do one and you press you send and, and, and you click. can hit a lot yep. of different places. So they're, they're being flooded with applications mm -hmm. and if they can't just crunch out the numbers and they have to actually read the files. I can imagine those offices have had to grow oh, absolutely! the number of applications and now if they're not able to use that class rank. Right. Then like they, they have to go look in other, you know, look other at other ways. aspects to evaluate the kid. Sure. A lot absolutely. More work. Absolutely. Um, any other cons that you can think of? Um, there are um, a few states, Texas of course included with a top 10% rule, but California and uh, Florida and Louisiana also um, use ranking statistics for admission and scholarship to um, state schools. Okay. And so, you know, where that might create a little bit of muddledness, okay. um, schools have worked with that in a couple of ways. Some schools, like I mentioned So kind of what you're saying is the con is, okay, if you are, the state says if you are in the top 10%, top 5%, whatever you're, you're going to get a scholarship right now if your school is not saying whether you're in that group mm -hmm. you're not automatically getting a scholarship so to that student that is in the top five mm -hmm. top ten top one whatever that number is they're actually being held back by their school exactly not and because of that that's why you know some schools as we mentioned before uh would rank the top ten percent and okay. then not the remaining ninety percent and some schools, some, uh, there's a, a district in Houston that's doing this, um, they'll allow the student and the student's family to decide whether or not to opt in or out of ranking. Okay. So yeah, that's a hybrid thing that we yeah. haven't, got, we ha haven't uh, talked about yet. Are th before we go to that though, is there any other cons you can think of for why um, schools would not rank? We kind of hit everything. I huh? think we hit on everything. Okay. I think I think we definitely hit on everything. Okay, so s some of our takeaways, um, mm -hmm. and and um, well, one takeaway for me is it's going to be very much school dependent. Mm -hmm. um, for some schools, they may be better serving their population of students to rank, and some schools may be better serving their population of students to not rank. Absolutely, like everything in education, there's really no one size fits all. Okay. I th and I would say the general rule is the um, the smaller you are, the less uh, the less benefit you have in class ranking. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the higher the quality of school, the more likely you are not to rank and the better it may be for your total right. population of students. Right. Absolutely. Whereas Absolutely. the flip side, the bigger you are and maybe uh, the students that you have that aren't as high quality, they would benefit from still ranking. Exactly. Okay. And then we've talked about, in terms of takeaway, these hybrid solutions mm -hmm. that are now out there, like allowing people to choose mm -hmm. whether they'll show their rank or not show their rank, um, ch showing only the top 10% right. rank, and then letting the rest uh, be unranked. Um, what other takeaways do you, you think are out there for schools and parents and educators? I think a huge takeaway, and I go back to the stress factor, I think a huge um, takeaway is not ranking will reduce stress when it comes to that well, sophomore, junior, senior mm -hmm. year. Um, I still hardly believe that it not ranking will encourage students to take a broader variety of courses mm -hmm. and, and, you know, really enjoy being learners and taking courses because they're interested in the material rather than just so they'll build up their GPA. Sure. Oh, that's great. Um, a couple of things as you're talking mm -hmm. brought to my mind. Um, I do think that we may, we may see a further evolution of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by the way, colleges know that you're not ranking and they understand what schools are doing and why they're doing mm -hmm. it. And they actually kind of reverse engineer that information anyway, don't they? They most certainly do. For instance, on the common application, when I am filling out um, the school report, which is a counselor's report, um, it, it's all online and it'll ask, do you rank? Mm -hmm. And we'll say no. And so then a whole nother set of windows opens up where they ask, um, you know, questions about grade distribution, mm -hmm. grading policies, 
how many people share a particular That's GPA, a what's the high, what's the low. Okay. So, you know, you're exactly right. From that information, um, colleges can they certainly can kind of deduce, deduce where, where the kid is, okay. exactly. Um, and then I, th I think the, the other thing it, to keep in mind is by not ranking, in a lot of ways, Texas school districts are bypassing the law mm -hmm. of the state. The top 10% rule mm -hmm. was put in place by our legislature for That's a reason. Right. And so it'd be interesting to see in the coming years if they decide to change things up to um, not allow that you know, schools to get past the, the Absolutely, the absolutely. Now, I think it's definitely, you know, very, very evolving topic, mm -hmm. especially in states like Texas, um, where the state schools do utilize that ranking data for um, admissions. Sure. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how things develop there. Yes. Well, um, gosh, I don't know how long we went, but uh, there is, we could go on we and on We could go on, on forever. This. We could be here all um, day. <laughs> so there's other topics that we could hit that we've just really lightly exactly. touched on in this, and we could do a whole uh, vlog on mm -hmm. those. But I really appreciate your help in us kind of digging into this topic. And I That's hope interesting. after uh, viewing this, you guys have a much better understanding of ranking or not ranking mm -hmm. of students, why it's happening, and, and whether it's of benefit to your school or your tr to your student. And... Um, by the way, we do not rank our students. That just is correct. For full disclosure. Mm -hmm. So we've made that decision for some of the reasons that we talked about already. Absolutely. If you guys have any um, questions for us here at the Tenney School, give us a call. Go to our website at www.tennyschool.com. We'd love to hear from you and talk about our school. And otherwise, we will see you next time. Bye.